Another thing we see, of course, is what, where is this trust deficit coming for students of color or religious communities, especially Muslim students, because we know that they, they are being targeted. They are under surveillance and they have to deal with those extra issues. So Muslim students, of course, like other students of color and faith, first of all, they have to accept the fact that mental illness is not a spiritual failure. It's not a moral, ethical failing. So they have to come to terms with that. And then the biggest problem becomes conveying it to their parents and family. And because the sh combined shame of the family, the family encourages them that even if they are suffering to seek care somewhere very quietly and so that rest of the community doesn't get to know about it because the model minority myth of your children's are trophies. They are not, they, they are reflective of your success. So if your student, uh, if your kid, children are struggling, then it's a fail, your personal failure as a parent. We need to kind of, that's why when I started working in the community, I had to do three way intervention. One thing was helping students come to terms with their mental health concerns, uh, fight their personal stigma, but then I had to talk to the parents to accept the fact that it's when I say one in four students struggling with depression, that includes your Muslim kids as well. And uh, the third piece was, of course, these kids, if you are from a faith-based community, validation from a faith leader becomes very, very integral to your well-being and wellness. To be accepted by a faith leader, I think, can be a very defining moment. So then, of course, the third part was training the faith leaders, teaching them to have these conversations.